There are some uh, new agents in mantle cell lymphoma that look like they could have a role. For example, there's the small molecule BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax, which has impressive single agent activity. And just based on the mechanism where venetoclax uh, blocks uh, BCL2 function and lowers the cell's apoptotic threshold, that drug is particularly attractive to use in combination. Another uh, new novel agent that looks promising is acalabrutinib, which is a um, second generation BTK inhibitor. It appears to have somewhat less uh, off-target effect than abrutinib does, and so our hope is that uh, it'll have just as much activity as abrutinib with fewer issues with um, bleeding, uh, arthralgias, myalgias, hypertension, uh, atrial fibrillation, some of the side effects of abrutinib that can become problematic for patients. Acal abrutinib appears to be a, um, a cleaner inhibitor of BTK, so it has less off-target effect. It hits uh, other kinases less potently than abrutinib does. So, for example, it appears to leave uh, the kinase tech alone, which appears to contribute to the platelet dysfunction and the bleeding with abrutinib. So the, the more favorable side effect profile appears to be due to less off-target effects. Acalabrutinib is being studied in mantle cell lymphoma. It's being tested as a single agent in relapse refractory mantle cell lymphoma. So that trial will help characterize the activity and the side effect profile. And it's also being tested in the frontline setting. It's being combined with bendamustine rituximab in a randomized clinical trial that uh, could have a major impact on the frontline management of older patients with mantle cell lymphoma. Ibrutinib is a Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor that is active and approved in mantle cell lymphoma and it has a high response rate. The problem is that there are patients that don't respond to it and that the duration of response is limited. Patients tend to relapse in the studies in the relapse setting in the range of one to two years. So obviously there are patients who are going to relapse. Most patients are going to relapse after abrutinib and there are some studies that suggest that after abrutinib patients have a, an unfavorable outcome. And there's some nuances to that study and its interpretation, but the net is it's pretty clear that you'd like to either make abrutinib work better so that patients didn't relapse or relapse later, or you'd like to have options that work after abrutinib. And so one strategy would be to say, well, are there better or different Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors that have different pharmacokinetic properties, different uh, binding to BTK, different mechanisms of resistance that might be more effective in some settings uh, versus abrutinib or overcome resistance. And so acalabrutinib is another BTK inhibitor. It's in clinical trials. It's clearly active in mantle cell lymphoma. And the question will be, is it better or offer advantages relative to abrutinib that's, that may lead to it being used more? And I would say at this point in time, we really don't know. We're awaiting those studies. There are also a number of other Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors in clinical trials that again will be tested similarly and may or may not have advantages versus what's the standard BTK inhibitor now, again, abrutinib.